during the war, they really planted a lot of mines in the whole southern Sudan. The first time we, we came here to Juba, the roads were closed due, due to the mine. People, they used to do their activities in fear. You can't go and collect the firewood and bring water or for bringing the building materials. They used to fear. When the war was over, uh, we still have this landmine in the ground. We came to realize that the local communities are stepping on these mines when cultivating, when going out rearing animals. So these mines is now killing uh, the local innocent population. As a result of the ceasefires, uh, people started moving back into South Sudan and they started resettling and living in this area. A lot of refugees are coming in from North Sudan. They're coming back to the place of their birth. And what has happened now is unexploded bombs and other unexploded remnants of war being discovered here as people are building and resetting into this vicinity. So the challenge is to get here as soon as possible and to get the explosive ordinance out of the ground and off the ground while people are actually building in this area. Since the starting of the mining, priorities were given to some specific main roads leading to neighboring countries. Those roads are the mine, and now you can see the flow of trade going well simply because of these activities of, of clearing mines. Now you can see that there are a lot of development. People, they move freely, they can build freely the houses. You can see that people they are farming, and the roads now, people, they can travel freely, not like before. And so if you can see now the development that's going on, it was through the work of mine action organizations. Otherwise, we would have not been here today. But many people, they are continuing losing their life up to now. And uh, there are areas which are not yet even touched, a great number of areas. Behind me, there is a known minefield which we're busy clearing, and they are finding mines as we talk. For the Republic of South Sudan to be a success as the world's youngest nation and to go forward, one has to stimulate economic growth. And at the moment, the prevalence and the, 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 the size of the contaminated areas here is actually preventing this. And I think for the Republic of South Sudan to be a success story, I think the other countries have to get involved uh, from a moral and ethical point of view to assist people to develop their country on their own. Yeah.